Hey everyone, this is Joanne coming to you live from Texas. I'm also known as hashtag unicorn boss. So as you guys are jumping online tonight, go ahead and hit me up with some unicorn emojis since those are my jam. If you're grabbing me live, go ahead and leave me a number one. And if you're catching me on the replay, go ahead and leave me a number two. So super excited tonight, you guys. We've got a great keto kitchen coming for you all tonight. This is probably one of my favorites, if not my favorite keto meal. It's just so quick and easy, decadent, delicious, cheesy, all of the things. So I'm super excited to share it with you. So I see a bunch of you guys jumping online. Welcome. Go ahead and say hi. Let me know where you're coming in from. If you're grabbing me live, go ahead and leave me a number one. And if you're catching me on the replay, go ahead and leave me a number two. By the way, if you're a brand new friend, don't forget to comment new below so that way I can circle back around and say hi to you. I love to connect and make that special connected special connection with my brand new friends. So if you're brand new to me, welcome. My name is Joanne. I've been keto. I'll be two years keto in November, so I'm getting close, you guys. Um, I'm down over 60 pounds. I uh, got my first pair of size six jeans from over 200 pounds, you guys. So I'm definitely celebrating the keto lifestyle. I'm just super passionate about keto. I love what it's done for me. So if you are keto, go ahead and comment keto in the comments and go ahead and share with us how much weight you've lost, how you're doing. I love to see you guys giving yourself a shout out. So let me go ahead and say hi to a few people real quick. By the way, if you haven't followed me yet or friended me yet, go ahead and do that right now. If you click right on the bottom here, it will pop up. You can do follow and see first and then click the three dots and turn on your live notifications. And if you want to help a girl out and share me out, if you have a lot of fun and you learn lots of things about keto on my page, please go ahead and give the video a quick share. I so appreciate your love and support. Feel free to share me to your favorite keto group too. I would absolutely Absolutely love that so let's see who we've got here and then we'll go ahead and we'll get cooking you guys so hi Jamie Maeda Lee Eric Rihanna Yvonne thanks for the unicorns Bonnie hey Shirley how you doing Jessica Gretchen Jeannie or Jenny, uh, Christy, Carol, awesome so happy to have you guys welcome so tonight we're making one of my favorite keto dishes so I've only cooked this once before on my page, so it is technically a repeat, but I was looking for something really delicious, and this is one of my favorites. So I've got so many brand new friends, I figured we could go ahead and try this one out again. So this is beef or guata casserole. Um, the macros on this are really good as well, so let me go over the macro info with you, and then we'll get started. So uh, calories are 287 per serving. Um, Total protein is 31 grams, so nice and high on the protein scale, which I love. Um, total carbs is, it's decently moderate, so it's eight grams of total carbs, but if you're doing a good job with your carbs throughout your day, most of my carbs are eaten during dinner, so if that's the case for you, you can go ahead and comment dinner in the comments. So eight grams of carbs per serving is not an issue. You could even have two servings and you'll be fine. And then I love that it's got 14 grams of healthy fats. So if you guys know me, I'm all about the healthy fats. So remember, don't be afraid of fat. It takes fat to burn fat if you're keto, so for me, I love to be up over 100 grams of fat every single day. Hi, Silvana. Welcome. So happy to have you. Hi, Lindsay and Cindy and Heidi. Awesome. So happy to have you guys on. So, all right. So we're making beef or guata casserole. Let me go ahead and get started. So bear with me while I test out this new keto kitchen setup um, because it's uh it's a completely different setup so i'm gonna have a little bit hard time getting on camera but i mostly care that you guys can see the food so we will get through this together so i'm gonna start with i've got some onion chopped up so we're gonna start with sauteing some onion and some garlic actually before i start with this i actually want to get the cheese ready so let's go ahead and do that first let me see if this is hot okay it's not so I like to kind of get the cheese ready so that way um, that's ready in advance and then you're not worrying about um, burning anything um, or finishing up the first part of the recipe while you're trying to get the um, while you're trying to get the cheese ready so <laughs> thanks for the love you guys I appreciate it so for the regatta portion of the casserole we're going to let's see here We need, 
it says 15 ounces of reguata and I forgot to convert it. So there's this happens to be a 30 ounce container of reguata. So basically I want half of this container uh, to put in for the filling. So make sure you're doing whole um, reguata. That way you're getting all the healthy benefits of the healthy fats for the reguata. So how are you guys doing on your keto journey? Tell me about it. Are you doing well? If you're doing awesome, tell me awesome and tell me why. And if you're struggling, comment struggle. Let me know uh, what you're struggling with and maybe I can help you out. Um, love to take, kind of take this time to connect with you guys and see what I can do to help you on your keto journey, so. So I'm just doing like a real rough estimate of that. So that looks about a half a container there. So that looks good to go. Let's see what else we need. So we're also going to add some mozzarella. Now I would encourage you guys, if you can, make sure you're getting yourself some fresh mozzarella and grating it up Fresh cheese is always best. Um, so this is a little bit dirty keto. I'm using some pre-shredded cheese. Um, this is just easy for me, it helps me out. And also I was on a budget this last shopping trip. So, you know, um, going pinching a few pennies to go with um, pre-shredded was what was really working for me. So like I said, it's a little bit dirty keto. If you can invest in getting a nice full block of mozzarella or cheddar and shredding it up, that would be best. So. We're gonna do a half a cup of mozzarella. I'm gonna put an extra dash in just for good measure, so. There we go. And we also need two teaspoons of oregano and two teaspoons of rosemary. Now, if you have fresh, that would be ideal. Being that I don't have fresh, I'm actually gonna go with um, a half a teaspoon. So that way the, the dried herbs don't get like too hard inside of the, inside of the cheese mix. Oh, he's great. I don't know where he is. I think he, oh, he's sleeping on top of the couch over here. You guys can't see him. So he's wonderful. He uh, was not liking the Texas heat today. So normally he likes to take me for a walk around the block. <laughs> so he got like a quarter of the way around and then immediately decided he did not want to go any further. So we had to struggle to make it around the rest of the block together. So... <laughs> All right, so that was oregano, I forgot to tell you guys, sorry. And this is some rosemary. And we're also going to do a tablespoon of grated Parmesan. So I'm actually gonna do two tablespoons just because I feel like, I feel like the last time I made this, one tablespoon, um, I mean, it was good, but I just felt like I could barely notice it. So I'm gonna do two this time. He is so cute. Hey, Grace, is so happy to have you. Thanks for sharing, sweet sister. Um, I'm doing amazing. How are you guys doing? So as you're jumping on, go ahead and share with me what you had for your keto dinner. I would love to hear about it. So I typically eat dinner late. What time do you guys usually eat dinner? Um, I don't know. Ever since I went keto, I'm not as hungry. So I can usually go for like really long times without eating. That's why you usually see me cooking so late. So, so I'm just stirring this all around. Let me just make sure I'm not missing anything that's supposed to be in here. So we're supposed to put our three cheeses, our oregano, our rosemary, and mix it up, so. I'm gonna actually have to actually put some more. Sorry, I know I just licked my finger on live camera, but I'm only cooking for me, so who cares? <laughs> 
Jana said she had leftover chef salad with her. Oh, while your guys had pizza. Girl, I am proud of you for sticking through that. Um, I can eat healthy all day long as long as I'm not around where I can smell the food. Sometimes the smell is like the hardest part for me. So uh, Misty had chicken Alfredo with zoodles. Ooh, one of my favorites. I actually have some small zucchinis in the fridge. So maybe we'll do a great zoodle recipe or a stuffed zucchini. Um, I love those types of meals. I think they're really fresh and delicious. So Janet says she likes to eat between 5.30 and 8. Okay. Grace said, she says, I'm doing great. I had cauliflower rice with chicken wrapped in bacon. Oh, good. I'm glad you got the uncured bacon. I was thinking of you today because I was at Kroger's, which was a new experience for me because in New York, we don't have Kroger's. So um, I found a few brands of uncured bacon that I had never seen before. So that was really fun. <laughs> Yeah, it's all smell once you get out, right? So Meredith said, uh, Alfredo and grilled asparagus and chicken parm. Ooh, that sounds awesome. And Katie's by Popeyes. Oh, girl, that place smells so amazing. That must be tough. Okay, so that's a little bit better. We just have some reguata, some mozzarella, some herbs in here. It's really delicious once you top it to the casserole. So really easy peasy. Okay. Let's go ahead and get going now. So I'm just going to add a little bit of olive oil. I usually prefer to cook with oak, uh, coconut oil, so feel free to share with me what you prefer to cook with. Um, but for those of you that don't know, I just moved to Texas from New York, so, so I'm restocking my pantry slowly, a little bit at a time. So this shopping trip, I did um, olive oil, and next shopping trip, I'm going to do coconut oil. So I encourage you, because a lot of people tell me all the time I can't do keto because it's expensive. I actually don't think keto is expensive at all. I save so much money doing keto just because I eat so much less food and because I'm buying less food. Um, but sometimes getting all of the oils at once can be pricing, so just rotate it. So my next shopping trip, I'm gonna get myself some coconut oil, and then the one after that, I'm gonna get some avocado oil, so. <laughs> Let's see here. Oh, Missy said she's in Ohio and she has a Kroger. Okay. Janet said, I want a pizza, but I'm not messing up my reboot. Girl, you're amazing. I'm so proud of you. Aw, thanks for the love, Katie. I appreciate you so much. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and get, I don't even know how to turn the stove on. You guys, we're learning. At least I have you all here and you love me, so I know we're in a safe space, but it's all a learning experience, so. <laughs> So I'm gonna do like maybe, let's see here, where did I put my spoons? Oh, here they are. We need to put some garlic in the pan. So um, the recipe calls for two, two cloves of garlic. So that sounds pretty good to me. So once this heats up, I'm gonna throw my garlic in. I always like to put my garlic in first and let it get nice and fragrant, and then I'm gonna add in my onion, so. Yeah, I have butter too, so yes, definitely. I've got some grass-fed butter in the fridge. So usually my first things that I like to go to are grass-fed butter, and then usually either, it's kind of a toss-up between olive oil and coconut oil, because I love to cook with the coconut oil, but I love olive oil for salads, so it's kind of like, it just depends on what I'm eating, so. Oh, that's the stove making that noise. I'm like, what is that noise? It's because I'm leaning up against it. It's making a little creak. So I'm definitely getting used to an electric stove, you guys. So my previous apartment had a gas stove, which was really nice. So I kind of know how those behave a little bit better than the electric, but that's okay. <laughs> so usually I think it's a half of a teaspoon is one clove of garlic. So I just did one teaspoon in here. Um, and this should be about two cloves of garlic. Okay, so we're starting to simmer here or sizzle here you guys can see okay so I don't want this go too long I don't want it to burn I don't necessarily want it to get brown I just like it to get a little fragrant and going just a little bit 
Mm, it smells so good already. So I grew up in an Italian out household, you guys. So we always had garlic going in the pan. So as soon as I smell it, it always makes me think of grandma. So I love that fresh garlic smell. So I'm going to go ahead and throw in my onion now and get this going. And then once this is done, we're basically gonna put our beef in here and brown it. By the way, the recipe calls for mushroom. And when I went to the store today, I totally forgot to grab some mushrooms. So I'm just gonna leave it out right now. I know that this is still gonna taste delicious, but if you can do it with the mushrooms inside, it is really, really good. So yeah, gas is a little bit hotter, so I feel like it heats up a little bit quicker. And also like if you're starting to burn, you can get it under control a little bit faster. So. Yes, today was my first hot day in Texas. So we were supposed to go to the pool. Got my bathing suit, got all the way down to where the pool was and it was closed. So, but it's gonna be back open tomorrow. So I plan on spending the day tomorrow at the pool, which will be a lot of fun. So, but we sat outside, my apartment complex had these amazing hanging swings. So I sang in, sat in the swing for an hour or two and chatted with my friends and it was sunny and breezy and beautiful, so I had a really, really great day. Yes, you do have to be careful not to over caramelize. Uh, Renee, I was actually gonna say that next. Um, I love nice and brown onions, but once they start to really caramelize, they can actually kick you out of ketosis. So neat little keto hack in case you didn't know. Make sure you can, you can get them to the point where they're starting to get brown, but then I wouldn't go any further, I would stop. I'm just watching this really quickly because I don't want it to burn. Hi, Melody. Hi, Amy. Welcome. So if you guys are enjoying the video so far, don't forget to friend me and follow me and give the video a quick share. I so appreciate that, you guys. So what keto questions do you have for me while we're waiting for this to go until we get to the next spot? How can I help you guys with your keto? Is anyone really having trouble right now? If you're struggling, you can comment struggle in the comments. Okay, so this is starting to get really nice right now. All right, so that's probably as far as I want to brown them. So let me go ahead and get my meat and we will put this in here. So I've just got one pound of grass fed butter. Oh, not butter, I'm sorry. Grass fed, I'm so used to saying that. Grass fed beef. Hi Kylie, welcome, hi Wendy. go-to snack? Great question, Faye. Um, well, probably quick pinch. One of my favorite things to have are uh, cheese sticks with a slice or two of pepperoni. Um, I like to do like eat some pepperoni, have some cheese, almost like I'm stacking crackers in my mouth. Um, what else? I love to do celery uh, stuffed with cream cheese. 
Uh, I like to put some olives on top and a drizzle of olive oil and vinegar. Um, I love to do avocado, so you could do sliced avocado with a drizzle of olive oil and um, some pink Himalayan salt. You could also make guacamole out of it. Um, I love to do pizza chips or fat bombs, so all kinds of things like that are really easy. Why does it have to be grass-fed? Um, grass-fed beef is the best for you. Um, I did a video on it. I'm not super versed on all the science, but there's something about the grass-fed beef and the cows, and um, I'll have to tag in the replay on the video. Can't clearly articulate it, but it's just so much better for your health. So I do encourage you to spend the extra dollar or two and definitely get yourself some grass-fed beef and uh, butter. It's really, really good for you, especially with the butter. It gives really high quality MCTs and it, there's, there are extra nutrients and things in grass-fed butter and meat that don't occur in other types of meat So and, and butter as well. So it's worth it. Chantel said, I'm missing keto. I'm on my summer break. Okay, so you're going to get back into it. That's okay. Thanks for sharing, Kylie. I so appreciate you. Wendy said, my favorite keto snack is sugar-free pudding mixed with heavy whipping cream. That is delicious. So it really just depends on what kind of keto you're doing. That was is what we would call dirty keto. Um, I try to say, me, myself, personally, I like to try and stay away from sugar-free things because... Um, they can disrupt your fat burn, they can mess up your ketosis. It really just depends on how strict you wanna be. So if you feel good about it and you're having great results, I would say go for it. Okay, this is looking really delicious. It made itself a nice little gravy here. So I'm gonna take it off the burner for just a quick second so I can read the next part of the recipe. Does keto help with inflammation? Absolutely, Rosalie. If you suffer from any kind of inflammatory diseases, I would definitely encourage you to do keto. I've seen life-changing results for whether it's inflammation in the gut, IBS, rheumatoid arthritis, all kinds of issues. I actually had back surgery back in 2001, and ever since I went keto, back pain has pretty much went down to almost zero, so. Okay. So next, I'm going to add tomato sauce and some vinegar and simmer for another five minutes. So for the tomato sauce, we need one cup. So let me show you guys what the tomato sauce looks like. This is a question that I get a lot. I'm going to turn the camera a little bit because it's really hot next to this burner. Okay. So this is one of my favorite tomato sauces in case you guys are curious so when you're shopping for tomato sauces on keto you really want to make sure you're looking for something that's no sugar added so there are natural sugars in the tomatoes but a lot of tomato sauces they will add an additional 6 to 12 grams of sugar sometimes so it's really important that you're reading your label so this classical organic one is pretty nice it says right across the top here no sugar added and if you look on the back, um, it just has natural sugars from the tomatoes. We've just got tomato puree, um, diced tomatoes, um, onion, olive oil, sea salt, roasted bell pepper, garlic, basil, spices, natural flavors. So this is a really good one uh, to look for. So let me go ahead and measure out one cup and then we'll put it in. also going to do some the recipe calls for balsamic vinegar to be honest I usually use um, I usually prefer to use a red wine vinegar just because it's got a little less carby and a little less sugary it tastes just as good with this so you can play around with it and feel free to use whatever works best for you so I'm going to use let's see here how much does the recipe want It says a tablespoon, so I can't remember if I halved it or not. I think I'm gonna go with a full tablespoon. The 
the the um, information for the recipe is right on the main post. So as soon as the video is over, you will have access to the recipe and all of the carb information, all of the macro information. Okay, let's make sure we're back on track here. Here we go. So I've just got, um, all I did was add my cup of um, tomato sauce as well as my tablespoon of vinegar. So it says to simmer on low for five minutes. So I'm just gonna set my timer so I don't lose track of time. Let me turn this down a little bit. Oh, you meant for the tomato sauce? Let me see here. It's got eight grams of carbs per half a cup. So, um, but that's the, these carbohydrates are from the actual tomatoes themselves. So there's, there's nothing in there that's bad. There are no sugars. Um, when you're doing tomato sauce, you always have to be mindful that it is gonna be high in carbs um, just in general. So if I was gonna do like a zoodle with some tomato sauce, I would just make sure I'm using like a really tiny amount, so. A few tablespoons is not gonna hurt you if you're using it as, as like an actual spaghetti sauce. You see what other questions I missed while this was going through? Oh, I love that Renee expanded upon why, why the food from regular cows is not as good with the, the corn and all of that. That's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that because I could not clearly articulate it. So Misty said, I'm heading to Europe, Paris, and London, and Germany next Friday, and I'm nervous about food. Can I give you my honest opinion, girl? I would say eat whatever you want. You better believe that if I was going to Germany, I'd be having some pretzels and beer. And when I go to Paris, I'd be having some macarons and some croissants. You can always get right back to keto. That is a really special, beautiful trip. So I would encourage you to embrace it, taste brand new things that you may never have the chance to experience again in your entire life and enjoy it, okay? I'm strict keto all of the time, but you better believe when I go on vacation or do something special, I'm okay with taking a break from it because I know this is something I'm gonna do for the rest of my life, so. I love Lindsay, says she suffers from PCOS and this has helped her so much. I'm so excited for you, congrats. <laughs> H-E-B, I don't know what that is. Okay, cool. I think we're all caught up on comments. So for those of you just jumping on, welcome. Um, we're finishing up, just getting ready to finish up a beef reguata casserole. It's one of my all-time favorite keto dishes. It's very decadent, cheesy, delicious. It will feed um, probably at least six servings. So if you have a family, um, it's nice to have extra food, I think, going around the table there. Uh, what I like to do, being that I'm single now, is I'm gonna freeze half of this, and then on a day when I don't feel like cooking, or if I need a quick and easy lunch, I can just pull um, some portions right out of the freezer, so. Oh, a great grocery store. Okay, cool, I'll have to look at that. I went into Market Side today, and I was not impressed. Not impressed at all. They had nothing there that was keto. They did have some Epic 505 uh, pork rinds and I really wanted to buy them, but I didn't want to wait in line for one, for one bag of pork rinds. It was kind of silly, so. <laughs> awesome, I'm so glad that I'm getting some Texas exclusive info. Thanks for sharing with me, love it. So we're almost done, you guys. I've got another minute and a half here and then we can start assembling our casserole. It smells so, so good. Hi, Deborah. welcome, so happy to have you. 
By the way, um, if you guys make sure you friend me and follow me, I do lots of keto cooking here, lots of keto love on my page. And uh, if you'd like to be a part of my secret recipe group, go ahead and comment group in the comments and I would love to get you an invite. Do we need to worry about counting calories if we keep, eat, if we all eat keto and stay within our carbs, fat, and protein? I don't ever count calories on keto, no. So, the, so definitely, if you're gonna be tracking your macros, the only thing you really wanna worry about is staying in your carb count range. And for me, I have to really make sure I'm getting up over 100 grams of fat. That's what really works for me on my keto journey, and that was when I really saw the weight just started to melt off. So. Um, and I find that I don't really have to worry about protein because if I'm doing a good job at getting 100 grams of healthy fats in, I get my protein automatically with that. So I get my fats and my proteins fall perfectly and I make sure I'm staying within my carbs and that is absolutely perfect. So awesome, I'm seeing a lot of group comments. I'll make sure I get you guys added. So our timer just went off here. I don't know if I have to do anything. Great, I'm glad you're gonna try the recipe. This one is really good, I promise you. Um, I've had some uh, older fans that have been with me over the past year try this and everyone loves it. So of course, don't forget the mushrooms if you're gonna do this. Um, it tastes really delicious if you have the mushrooms in this ragu mix as well. So let me turn off my pan here. Let me show you guys what this looks like. Doesn't that look amazing? So it makes a really beautiful um, gravy almost. So let's see. I think I might have to get a bigger pan. Hold on. Okay. So I've just got a pan here um, that I'm going to use a casserole dish. Um, I've got some coconut oil spray just so it doesn't stick, so I'm just going to lightly put this on. Actually, I think this is too big. Maybe I will try the smaller one. Let's try the smaller one and see how it does. So I'm just going to put the... You guys can still see okay. Gonna work out perfectly. So basically, the, you want it to come like halfway through, halfway up the casserole dish, because you want to leave room for the roguetta topping that we're gonna put on top here. Yes, it's a really good, really good idea to make a nice big batch of this. You can even make a double batch and freeze it for sure. <laughs> Ooh, beef broth. That's a good idea. Awesome. Okay, let's get our cheese. So I'm going to start topping it. I wish I could bring it closer, but this burner's hot. So hopefully you guys can see as well as we can right now. This kind of reminds me of shepherd's pie. So, and I used to love that growing up. I never made that connection before until just now because this is kind of reminding me of mashed potatoes. But it's really good because the cheese gets all like, almost like browned and bubbly on top.
So I'm just trying to get it nice and even. I'm probably being a little extra about it, to be honest, but I just want it to cook evenly. So if you can get a nice even layer of cheese on the top, it really does best. So there we go. That's looking like it's it. So got cheese everywhere, but that's okay. <laughs> So check it out. Doesn't it look really delicious? So Debbie, I'm kind of outside of my exercise routine right now, just with the move and everything. It's been so crazy. So I can tell you most of my 60 pounds of fat lost was without regular exercise. There was a short spurt there where I was working out about three to five times a week. And I hope to get back into that because it's so good for you. It's so healthy for you to make sure you're building nice lean muscle. So I will be able, I hope to get back into that soon. We've got an amazing gym here at my complex. So I hope to take advantage of that soon. So I love my new apartment. It does feel like home, Barbara. I was sitting on that couch right there. <laughs> <laughs> chilling out and helping people and messaging everybody about their keto so it's been fantastic I love the quiet I could get used to this every single day it's wonderful so thank you all so much for the love on my journey thanks for joining me tonight I'm gonna throw this in the oven uh, I've got it at 375 degrees we're gonna let it cook for about 30 minutes or so until it's nice and bubbly on top so don't forget to uh, comment group if you want to be a part of my secret recipe group friend me follow me share out the video I love you guys and we'll be back to do hopefully some more keto cooking tomorrow. Have a great night. I'll be back to chat with you again soon. Take care.